This is tough. What's up, buff dudes and girls? The year is almost coming to a close. Only a couple months away now, the holidays are almost upon us, and this is usually the time where a lot of people will reassess their fitness goals. Getting ready for the New Year's resolutions. Whether that be losing some weight, gaining some muscle, or maybe just trying to build new and better habits. And that's one of the reasons why we want to do this video, because we're going to be comparing two very popular styles of training. Low volume versus high volume. Now we're going to be going through a day on each one routine to see um, kind of the comparisons, either the drawbacks, the benefits, and hopefully help you make a choice in your new fitness journey. But first, what is volume? Volume is the total weight you lift throughout your workout. It's calculated by a simple equation. Sets times reps times load. You multiply your total sets, reps, and the weight you performed on each exercise in the workout, equaling your volume. Although the weight is typically higher in a low volume program, the sets and reps are lower, equaling a lower volume overall. High volume uses relatively lighter weights, but the sets, reps, and the amount of exercises are increased, totaling a higher volume. Day one, and it's gonna be low volume. I wanted to make a quick breakfast, so I just had one scoop of oats, a scoop of protein, one banana, a cup of blueberries, and a handful of walnuts to make sure I have enough energy to push some heavy ass weight. Because with low volume, uh, the amount of sets and reps are low, but the weight is extremely high. So it's gonna be pretty intense. But I think I'm all fueled up, I'm ready to go. So let's hit these weights, baby. Yeah. Made it to the gym, and we are starting with some mobility, as you can see. We are performing full body workout today. Uh, three sets of five repetitions. Um, we'll probably not only be doing our mobility, but also some warm-up sets before each exercise too, just to really make sure uh, we're nice and mobile, ready, warmed up before each exercise. Um, and we always are huge advocates of mobility, warming up, making sure you're ready before any kind of strenuous activity, uh, and especially workouts like this. But low volume, uh, with high intensity, higher weight, is really gonna put a lot of stress on those joints and those muscles. So you wanna make sure you are ready, and you're taking the time to warm up, because injury prevention is always a huge thing. So as you can see, we're just performing our warm up sets uh, with relatively light weight, probably around 10 repetitions. You're not taking the weight um, till failure, the repetitions till failure, you're not going too high in your weight. You wanna make sure you still have a lot of a lot of fuel in the tank to perform the actual working sets. The warm up sets are complete. It's time to go on to the working sets. I haven't done a low volume, high intensity in quite a while. I've actually been performing higher volume workouts, so this feels pretty heavy. I'm not quite used to it. It also feels good. Um, I think I'm gonna be sticking with that for the next two sets, five repetitions. This feels about right. I was hitting that, that failure on that last one, so. I think we judge the weight just about right. Ooh, now time for about a two to five minute rest period. What to do? Flex. One thing I do love about low volume is, you know, you're pushing this heavy ass weight and you're thinking, oh my God, I don't know how much more I can take. But that's already two sets now I've done and you only got one more. So that's kind of cool. Mentally, it is kind of easier that way because you're not like, well, shit, I got another three more, four more of this, this strenuous activity and this pain and the suffering. Like one more, I'm ready to move on to the next exercise. So sometimes mentally it can be a little bit easier that way, I feel like, at least for me, knowing that the end is so close. And it could be the end as in me dying because <laughs> This is tough. Squats are done. Uh, now it's time to move on to bent over rows and we're gonna be performing two warm up sets with lighter weight, about 10 repetitions, then moving on to the working sets of five repetitions. Oh yeah. That feels good, feels heavy. Probably go up a little bit, so I'm not quite hitting the failure at that fifth repetition, but it's still pretty exhausting. I got two more sets. Yeah. 
setting up the next exercise, which is going to be the floor press. Now again, we're gonna do a couple sets of warm up and then moving on to the working sets. The main goal for most low volume training is strength. Higher intensity coupled with lower set and rep schemes and longer rest times. Making sure you are focusing on progressive overload, so your body is constantly trying to adapt to higher weight. There are many variables to keep in mind when performing low volume. Set and rep scheme, intensity, which means what percentage of your one rep max you're working in, and frequency. Full body like we're performing today would be considered high frequency because we'll be performing the same exercises multiple times a week. But you can also split up the muscle groups for lower frequency, not putting as much stress on the body in one week. So there are many ways to train in low volume, but all mostly geared towards the same goal, strength. We got two more sets of this and then we're moving on to some shoulders. Just made it back to the gym and what is any program without the proper nutrition? So I'm gonna be fueling up and getting ready for tomorrow to perform some high volume. It is a new day. Got a lot to eat yesterday, got eight hours of sleep and I have hydrated, stretched a little bit, rolled out, feeling good and recovered. Now it's time to get dressed and head to the gym for some high volume training, baby. Yeah. Made it to the gym and we are starting off with some mobility once again and also warming up the shoulders because we are doing a shoulder workout today. And with high volume, of course, the sets are gonna be increased and the repetitions are gonna be higher as well um, with the weight lower. And you're really just focusing on muscle fatigue. You're not really taking each set to failure. You're really trying to feel that burn and trying to feel that pump. That's kind of the goal with high volume. So we're gonna be doing about four sets, four working sets with maybe one, maybe two of uh, warm up sets before that and then move on from there. So that was the last set and the last reps of this exercise and I was pretty much hitting that failure on those last reps and really fatiguing the muscles. So you do want to try to pick a weight that is really going to test uh, the muscles and test your strength levels at least at the last couple reps of the last set. So we got some face bolts here, utilizing the cables, really hitting the rear deltoids, posterior deltoids, but since it is a compound movement, utilizing not only the shoulder, but also the elbow joint, you are hitting a lot more than just the rear delts. You're hitting your upper back, your traps, your terrace major, minor, um, and also, of course, your biceps with the pulling motions of secondary muscle group. So this is probably one of our favorites for the not only upper back mass, but also really hitting those rear delts with heavy weight. Now, one thing to keep in mind when making a choice between low volume and high volume, you know, higher volume is not really gonna be focusing on strength so much. It's gonna be more geared towards hypertrophy, the muscle size, and also muscle conditioning as well. With these sets, quite a bit higher, uh, anywhere from four to six sets, some as high as 10 sets, and the reps a little bit higher as well, around 15 to eight repetitions per set and that's mainly dictated by your intensity. And since the intensity on a higher volume is lower, around the 65% to 75% of your one rep max, the reps are gonna be a bit higher. And also frequency is going to be decreased quite a bit too. Since you are splitting up the muscle groups like today, we just did shoulders. Obviously you do like maybe chest and back together or just chest and triceps, chest and biceps. There's so many different variables you can do. Obviously today we did a tri-set, you can do supersets, drop sets, you can do pause reps, negative reps, force reps. But low volume and high volume are basically kind of like the foundation to start building off of. And you can kind of go from there. But I feel like today was a success. It definitely felt good. Time to head home and I'll see you there. Well, there you go. Low volume versus high volume. Which one should you choose? Is one better than the other one? Not at all. It really just depends on your personal goal. Do you want to see strength? Do you want to see size, muscle conditioning? That's really the base starting point to any kind of program is that you understand and know your specific goals set forth before you. Low volume and high volume is also just a starting point that really doesn't dictate everything. There's so many different variables you can switch up to the intensity, the frequency, even different techniques you can use, supersets, drop sets, and so on to really make sure you're always progressing in the gym and also keeping it interesting too. Now, when I first started working out, I had no clue what the hell I was doing. And I feel like that's probably the case for most beginners. You know, I saw my brother, my dad go to the gym and I would want to go with them. But once I got there, I didn't even know what exercises to do or 
even what they were called. Thankfully, my dad, uh, he let me read a few of his bodybuilding books, one by Steve Reeves, one by Franco Colombo, and one by Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I flipped through those pages and I was in awe by the way these guys looked. And I wanted to look like them. And in order to look like them, I feel like I needed to train like them. But I still didn't know what I was doing. I didn't even know what compounds were, isolations were. I didn't know what high volume was, low volume, the benefits of each one. But I did jump on one of Arnold's programs, which was Monday, chest and back, Tuesday, legs, Wednesday, shoulders, Thursday, buys and tries, chest and back on Friday, and legs on Saturday. So it was a high volume, high frequency type of training. And I'm kind of surprised I survived it. But, you know, it's funny enough, I'm continuing to stay on a program like that, even to this day. And I feel like my body responds to it the best. And I give credit to looking the way I do by training like that. So it really goes to show you that your training style really dictates on not only how you perform, but also how you look too. But I still feel the benefits of switching things up from time to time to make sure you're always staying motivated, staying inspired, having fun, trying new things. And that's really what it's all about in the end is making sure you want to go to the gym. You know, you set a goal for yourself, you choose a training style that's gonna help you with that goal, uh, but then you also have to have fun while you're doing it. So hopefully guys, you had fun watching this video, and I know we had a lot of fun making it, and if you wanna see more videos like this in the future, please comment below, and as always, stay buff.